Hi, this is Jeff Layton, your storage editor for Linux Magazine. And today I want to show you some uh, ideas around what people call short-stroking hard drives. And it's a fairly popular technique, particularly for gamers or people who are doing benchmarks. But the idea behind short-stroking is that you don't use the entire disk for storage. That sounds kind of counterintuitive. You bought the disk, why not use all of the storage? But in the case of disks becoming so cheap, you can use the outer tracks of the disk, which you can see over here on the right-hand side. Use this outer track of the disk just for storing data, and this drive head will move much less distance, which will decrease your uh, latency, which can improve your IOP performance. So it's kind of an easy way to take a disk. You're not using all of the space, of course, but what you're going to do is improve the performance by what's called short stroking, just using the outside tracks of the disk. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually just going to F disk the disk, partition the disk, and it partitions from the outside in. So we're only going to use the, out, the first uh, few blocks of the disk. And the way we're going to check this is by a simple program that's called Seeker. And if you look at this article in uh, on linuxinsight.com, you see the URL up here, linuxinsight.com, how fast is your disk.html. Uh, this gentleman wrote an article about how to test for your latency of your disk. And he wrote a program, actually if you go down a little bit farther, called Seeker, which actually just measures the random access time of the drive. Fairly simple program to do, and it works. You don't have to create a file system. It works on the partition directly. So we're going to actually do that uh, on a disk that I have in my system. I'm actually on a Windows system because I'm still struggling trying to get screen capture to work on Linux really well. So I'm on a Windows machine logged into my Linux test box, and that's this left-hand window using PuTTY. And I've got a couple of disks on here. They're Seagate ST. 35006.41 AS-RK if you want the whole detail. They're basically just set of two drives, 200 RPM, 500 gig drives, single platter, two heads, uh, and that's what I'm going to use for uh, the test today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to F-disk it, and we're going to use the entire disk, and we're going to see uh, what that does to our latency. So I'm going to create a partition. Actually, I'm going to add a new partition primary, first partition, first cylinder. I'm going to use the entire disk, 6,801 cylinders. And I'm going to write it. And you'll see throughout the testing here, I'm going to be hitting pause a few times because C does take about 30 seconds to run. So I'm going to run through some scenarios. And I'll be pausing in the middle of this. So I've already built Seeker. It's just GCC, Seeker, and I'm off to the races. So I'm going to run it on the first partition that I just created. So it's going to take about 30 seconds, and I'm going to pause it in the middle and then come back. So you can see, wait about 30 seconds, so I'm going to pause it. And it just finished, and it gave me a latency of around 12.37 microseconds, or milliseconds, sorry. Um, I'm not going to do my normal good benchmarking techniques where I run the application several times, at least 10, take an average, report a standard deviation. This is just to give you a quick idea of what's going on. So the baseline whole disk is 12.37 microseconds. So now let's do some short stroking. So I'm going to repartition uh, this the SDB, my hard drive, and I'm going to create a new partition, primary, first partition, start at the first cylinder, but this time I'm only going to use 75% of the drive, which gives me cylinder count of around 45,600, so about 75% of the number of cylinders. So I'm going to go ahead and write that, and it's going to repartition uh, the hard drive, and then I'm going to run Seeker again. So let's go ahead and run Seeker on that partition that I just created, SDB1. And again, I'm going to pause while it runs. It just finished running, and with 75% of the cylinders, I get a little bit lower latency of around 11.12 microseconds. So I dropped it by about a whole 1.5 microseconds here, or milliseconds, sorry. Hmm. So let's go ahead now, and let's try short stroking again. But this time, let's actually use a little bit less. Instead of 75%, we're going to use 50%. So again, I'm going to start at the first cylinder, but this time I'm only going to use half of them. 
which is about 30,400 cylinders. So it's going to go ahead and repartition the table. It's calling an I.O. control to do that, syncing the drives, and it should be ready to go. And I'm going to run Seeker again on that partition I just created, SDB1. So remember, what I'm doing now is I'm not using the cylinders closest to the center of the drive. The first time I skipped 25% of them. This time I skipped 50% of them. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and run the application again. And let's see what the latency does. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again. So just finished running, and I, this time I got 10.17 milliseconds. So it's getting much faster as opposed to the first time when I used a whole drive. It was 12.37 milliseconds. It's just a little over 10 this time. So, okay, I've lost 256 gigs of the capacity, but I've increased the late or decreased the latency, increasing performance and increasing the IOPS. So it's actually giving me a lot more performance than it normally would have. Yes, I'm losing space, but if I'm all about performance, and a lot of times we are, we need to do whatever we can to get there. So I'm going to, this time though, let's do 25% because I'm very curious how fast we can get this drive. So I'm going to again start off the first cylinder, and the last cylinder I'm only going to use 25% of the drive, so it's about 15,200 cylinders. So this time I'm only using the out 25% of the drive, so I'm only using about what is that, 150, 256 divided by 2, 128 gigs of the drive. So I'm losing three quarters, but I'm maybe gaining a lot of performance. So let's go ahead and run Seeker again, and let's see what happens to the performance. So it's finished, and I've got 9.53 milliseconds as my seek time or my latency. So notice I've gone from about 12.37 to 9.53, so I've knocked off almost 3 milliseconds, or about 25% the original latency, by going by only using 25% of the drive. Sure, it's a waste of space, but when a drive, 500 gig drive costs you $40, and you need that much more performance, it may be actually useful for you to try this. So now let's try 10% instead of 25 percent we're going to use now we're cutting pretty deep we're using losing a lot of space but let's see what it does to the performance maybe we can eke out just a little bit more so about 10 percent is about 6,080 cylinders so I, I'm only going to use about 50 gigs of this drive but if you like you can compare it to uh, an SSD where 50 gigs is about what you can afford 100 150 dollars so this could give you a lot more performance, probably not approaching an SSD, but somewhere along those lines. So now I'm going to run Seeker against that partition, which is like 10% of the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Let's see what happens. So it just finished, and we got a latency of 8.31 milliseconds. So that's the latency only using 10% of the drive. We didn't. We lost about 1.2 milliseconds off of the latency, so pretty good performance. But now let's get a little bit crazier, and let's try only using 5% of the drive to see what happens. And that's about 3,040 cylinders. So we're losing... Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and let's start another partition. This is what happens when you type and talk at the same time. 3,040 cylinders. So I'm using the outer 5%, and I did it again. Primary partition, first partition, first cylinder, 3,040 cylinders. So I'm going to write that. So I'm only going to use 5% of the drive. I'm only using 25 gigs out of 500. These are the very outer tracks of the drive. So I should see really low latency. So let's try it again, running against that partition, and see what kind of latency we get. So it just finished, and I got a latency this time of 8 milliseconds. Remember, for 10% of the drive, I got 8.31, so now we got 8. So we're starting to hit diminishing returns, but I do want to try just one more, just because I'm a crazy person. Let's see what happens if we use only 1%. So this is only going to use about 608 cylinders out of 60,000. Nope, and I did it again. Let's create that partition again. Starting cylinders 1, I'm going to go to 608 cylinders. So I'm going to use only 1% of the drives. I'm only using 5 gigabytes. Big waste, but I want to see how low latency we can get from this drive. 
So I'm going to go ahead and run Seeker again against this partition, and let's see how fast we can go. And actually, when we finish this, I'm also going to try some testing where we look at not using the outside tracks, but let's use the inside tracks, and let's see what happens to the latency. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it while it finishes. So just finished, and this time I've got a latency of about 7.12 milliseconds. So I'm really driving the latency way down. If you compare the 1% to the 100%, remember when we used a whole drive, that was 12.37 milliseconds, and now we're at 7.12 milliseconds. So we dropped it by not quite 50% of our starting point. Huge, huge change. But if you need performance, this is exactly what, uh, an option you can use. Again, you lose space, but it's a trade-off. You may be able to increase performance greatly. So this time I'm going to create a partition that starts at a much higher cylinder count, which means much more towards the middle of the drive, and then I'm going to test it and see what happens. So let's test 25% of the drive, but let's test the inside part of the drive. So around 75% to 100% if you think of the drive as whole. So I'm going to start at about 45,600 as my starting cylinder and I'm going to go all the way to the end. And so I'm looking at the inside 25% as opposed to the outside 25%. So if you're keeping track at home playing along, you'll notice that when we use the 25% of the drive it was about the latency was 9.53 milliseconds, 9.53 for the outside portion. So let's take a look at what's happening uh, on the inside to see if there's any change or see if using the outside as opposed to the inside part of the disk makes any difference. So let's go ahead and start that and I'm going to pause it while it finishes. So it just finished and it gave me a latency of 9.91 milliseconds. So remember when we used uh, the outside 25% it was 9.53 this is about 9.91 so we gained about 5% or so, you know, about a half a millisecond out of 10 uh, gives us about 5% overall. So it does make a difference we use the outside track as opposed to the inside track. But overall what short stroking means is it's just less cylinders for the heads to access, the drive heads. So we've really improved performance just by reducing the capacity of the drive. But we also learned that using the outside track gives us much greater performance, lower latency, higher IOPS. So we've taken a plain 7200 RPM drive gone from about 12.3 milliseconds, you know, down to, you know, 9.53, gone all the way down to 7 milliseconds if you want to use just a very little piece of drive. We've greatly reduced the latency. So I looked at another article online talking about short stroking the Velociraptor drive from Western Digital. And this is a high RPM drive. And if you compare these numbers, they're getting average seat times of about 7, and they go all the way down to 5 milliseconds by greatly reducing the capacity of the drive. But here we have a very high RPM drive compared to our little lowly 7200 RPM drive. And we're getting latencies only about uh, 7 milliseconds in the, in the best case. So only about 50% greater than a very fast drive. And this is a pretty expensive drive. Taking a very inexpensive $40 or $50 drive, short stroked it, used the outside tracks, and get a latency fairly close to uh, a very fast, high RPM, expensive drive. And if you want, if you're really into it for performance, you can short stroke a couple of simple drives, use RAID 0 across them, and you've got a very low latency, high up, reasonable capacity uh, storage system for things like gaming or even running databases or something like that. So this concludes uh, my discussion about short stroking hard drive. This is Jeff Layton, the storage columnist for Linux Magazine. Um, I bid you a good day, and let's talk again soon.